last Project Street Sleeper video, we dropped our transmission and bolted in a bunch of new clutch goodies that will be well suited to the additional power that we'll be making. So with the transmission back in and that job out of the way, you know what time it is. Turbo time. If you're watching this, you probably already know how important proper turbo sizing is. Going too small can give you great low end power in response, but choke power in the higher RPMs. While going too big can make your power band peaky and leave you with a car that feels slow under most driving conditions. A turbo that's properly sized to your setup can give you responsiveness and low end power while also delivering strong power in the higher RPMs too. But choosing a turbo that is perfect for your combo, offers the latest technology, will last a long time, and is supported by a company who stands behind their products, isn't so easy. That's why I gave the folks at Forced Performance a call. Forced Performance has been manufacturing high-performance, race-proven turbochargers out of their shop in McKinney, Texas for people all around the world for a long time. They offer bolt-on turbochargers for the Mitsubishi Evo, Subaru WRX, Diamond Star Vehicles, and many others. They are the experts in Mitsubishi Garrett hybrid turbochargers and are known for their popular FP Red, Green, and Black turbos. They also offer upgrades for many factory turbos and turbo parts and accessories like their unbeatable FP race manifold, install kits, tile waste gates and blow off valves, and much more. They even offer their industry leading on-site tech support and best friend service. It's not cheap, but where else can you get this? Is it a coincidence that they posted this on April 1st? Hmm. So what did they recommend for my Galant? Let's see what's in the box. This is the Forced Performance 68 HTA for 4G63 powered Diamond Star Motors vehicles and the Gallant VR4. The FP68 HTA is a direct bolt-on replacement for the stock 14B Mitsubishi turbocharger that came on my Gallant and outflows both the Evo 316G and 18G wheels and does it much more efficiently. Flow is increased to a stout 51 pounds per minute which is really something for a turbo that looks stock. What is more beautiful than a billet compressor wheel? Just look at that thing. To maximize its power potential, it comes with FP's own 8 centimeter turbine housing. Check out Force Performance's website for more details on this awesome little beast. So can we bolt it on? Can we? Huh? Huh? Can we? Can we? Sorry brain, not yet. While the FP 8 cm turbine housing is awesome on its own, we're going to do a little porting and gasket matching to it, our exhaust manifold, and our O2 housing first. This is important when making the most of your setup. You want smooth matching transitions as your exhaust travels out of the combustion chamber, into the exhaust manifold, then into the turbine housing, and finally through the O2 housing. Just imagine your exhaust flow is a stream of water. Even small restrictions or uneven surfaces cause significant turbulence and will disrupt flow. All right, enough eye candy. Let's get to work. Before you start any porting project, it's essential that you have the proper tools. Here's everything we'll need. First up is a good air die grinder. You can find electric ones that will do the job too. Since we're working on iron, I'll be cracking open my tiny briefcase full of carbide burr bits. When you buy quality ones, they'll allow you to work faster and will be good for multiple uses. So skip the cheap ones. An assortment like this is nice because you'll use the different shapes and sizes for different parts of the job. I also picked up this abrasive cartridge roll kit. 
The kit includes two mandrels, and I had this longer one that I bought years ago. These are used for finer detail work and cleaning up rough areas left from your burr bits. I also have some sharp picks for scribing around gaskets, and last but not least, good safety equipment. You'll want hand, eye, and ear protection, and some dust masks so you're not breathing in this junk. I'm starting with the exhaust manifold, which is a factory Mitsubishi Evo 3 unit that I bought used many years ago. The previous owner ported it, so I'm just going to clean that up a bit and make sure that my gasket matches the manifold outlet. After that, I grabbed the gasket and bolted it onto the turbine housing as a porting guide. I made sure to make an orientation mark so I know the right way to install the gasket later on. This job takes a while, so find a comfortable working position and take your time. I like to keep my tool moving so that it doesn't dig in too deep into any one spot. Also, there's no need to use lots of pressure, just let the tool do the work. You want a nice, even surface all around. A bright light like this allows you to check your progress and see what areas need more attention. Right now I'm focusing on this wastegate port. I want a smooth transition so I won't run into any boost creep issues. This work will help the wastegate flapper do its job of keeping the boost under complete control. The FP turbine housing doesn't need much attention so I'm really just cleaning things up a bit. After I'm happy with my carbide bit work, I use the abrasive cartridge to smooth things out. Oh and if you haven't noticed, porting makes a huge mess. If you're not careful, you'll be finding shavings in places that you might not expect. <coughs> Next up is the O2 housing. I'm using a stock second generation DSM housing that I had laying around. It starts out with a little more internal volume than the first gen version. I spent the most time on this part as it has lots of extra material that needs removed in order to improve overall flow and wastegate efficiency. I started by focusing on the turbine outlet passage. My goal here is to match this passage to the FP turbine outlet. As you can see, the stock passage is a good bit smaller, so just bolting this O2 housing onto the turbo without gasket matching and porting would create a big restriction. The same porting tips apply that we reviewed earlier, so just take your time and study your work as you go. After I was happy with the turbine outlet passage, I started on the wastegate passage. There's lots of opportunity for improvement here. During this process, I moved back and forth between the turbine housing and the O2 housing to make sure that I was matching them well. Here you can see me opening up the turbine's wastegate outlet area. As I got to working, I decided to use this shape to do my best to improve wastegate flow. After that was finished, I moved back to the O2 housing and matched that shape there. I spent lots of time opening up this area and improving all of the transitions. My final porting step was the O2 housing outlet. Here I used my downpipe gasket as a porting guide. As I worked further down into the housing, I spent lots of time opening up the area where the wastegate passage merges into the collector. After cleaning all the shavings out of my nooks and crannies, here's the end result of our work. I'm real happy with how all this turned out. 
Reporting is a fun project that is very rewarding. Spending time improving how your parts function as a whole is time well spent and will give you an advantage over folks who overlook key details like this. So can we bolt it on? Can we? Can we? Huh? Can we? Sorry brain, not yet. When you've spent this much time and effort optimizing your parts, it only makes sense to take the next step. So I talked to my man Justin at Detective Coating, who recommended his ceramic high heat coating for these parts. He showed me a bunch of great color and finish options, and given my sleeper goals, he recommended his tungsten or flat dark gray coating. So I boxed everything up and sent it off to Justin. He got right to it, and what you'll see with all of Detective Coating's work is excellent attention to detail. From the prep work, to making sure that only the necessary areas receive coating, to the quality of the finish, it's what sets them apart and makes their work worth every penny. When the box arrived, I felt like a kid on Christmas morning opening it up. Just look at how this all turned out. It's just so beautiful. It's all just so beautiful. Well done, Detective Coding. Well done. Thanks for watching. In our next Street Sleeper video, we'll remove our tired old stock turbo and install our awesome new setup. Also, I've been blown away by all of your positive comments and support. I just want you to know that it means a lot to me and makes putting these videos together lots of fun. Also, I've been getting your car pictures and updates on your projects on Facebook, and I love it all. So keep it coming. So with that said, thanks again, folks, and we'll see you next time. I also want to thank ECM Tuning, Detective Coding, and Forced Performance for supporting Tom's Turbo Garage. Please check them out, as they not only do great work, they're great people, too. <laughs>